making you more confused. Okay, if you look at the Dixie, um, and I'll do I'll do a rundown on the Dixie. If you look at the Dixie, clearly you can see significant drop because the value of the dollar fell. Okay, comes right down to these key moving averages. So you've got a really key tech zone at this point. In other words, technical aspects that one would look for to improve probability naturally of an upside movement um, are are apparent. And you can see you've got support there, you've got your mixture of key moving averages, stock oscillate coming down, the price is clearly low on this nearer um, period of time. Now, what you have got is a very, very small rebound here. There isn't, again, there isn't much strength to the upside. So if you drift down slightly lower than you are, it's very commonplace that happens because you break down one level of support and then you go to the next normally. Um, it would pull you down to your key 200 MA. So for me personally, that would be in line with many areas of key price action like this. Okay, I'll just draw a line. Um, and it would be ideal for long entries. You had significant, significant period of time with the, the, the US dollar, the Dixie dollar index going up. That lasted July to October few months straight up. So you would have expected, or you should have expected, a retracement like this at some point. Now you're only at 0.382, okay, it's not a long way. 0.5, as you can see, would take you lower to key levels, okay? So that is where I prefer it personally. I think you'll drift slightly lower, and that is in line with my analysis on other pairs, like your pound, dollar, and your euro dollar. Now. Specifically to answer the question that I commonly get, how do you compare them? How do you use the dollar index to trade the euro? Well, the truth is I really just don't. Because all you're looking at is more or less the same thing, but turned round. It doesn't really make a big difference, in my opinion. I think the more things you look at and factor in, the more confused you get. The more choice you've got, the harder it is to make a decision, in other words. So just treat everything individually with an overall bias. If you're going to long the euro, don't short the pound dollar at the same time, okay? Because you're trading against yourself, right? So you have to be really careful. But there's no point in me saying, okay, well, I'm going to trade the dollar index here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the euro and confirm my bias, okay? All you're doing is confirming what you've already just confirmed. That is ideal for shorts because you're coming to uh, key price action off the back of a significant up move, which you saw yesterday with uh, US inflation. Your fall isn't incredibly strong, therefore I wouldn't be shocked if you come slightly higher before you get any down move, right? It's not the time to buy really because there's not much profit margin. You would need something down here if you wanted to get long. Okay, you've got to think about the price and the value at the time. If you're long here, you've got 108.5 to 109. If you're down here, it's 107.4 to 109. It's a considerably further way. That's why we let the price move accordingly. Okay. So again, if you go on your four hour or your one hour or anything like that, this is showing you slight uptick in price. If you do dawdle a little bit before you go back up, it wouldn't shock me. But you don't have much long side value really, unless you're, you're you know you're happy with risk and you're a scalp trader. You can see quite clearly the flat-ish uptrend that has persisted with these lower lows and higher highs has gone on for a significant period of time. But you can't really quantify any new long entries on the longer term basis unless you get back to key um, MAs, early key MAs, and your uh, key support there. Okay, In the longer term up move and the devaluation of the US dollar, which is what the trajectory is, is basically telling you from yesterday and today, um, you would be better off if you were trading the overall uptrend to be long on those lows historically and, and just naturally that's a fact so you would be looking for the next uptick in price okay and if you were going to do that and you're looking for something like this to the upside you would need a significant fall because if you're buying here you don't have the room for the up move Okay. In other words, you're going to be going straight to resistance immediately, and that significantly reduces the um, 
the room you've got to take long side gains. Okay, and it's the same across the board. So loading up the dollar index and then loading up the euro and the pound and looking at the same picture and then confusing yourself by minor adjustments in price action is only going to cause more problems. So I don't particularly hold weight in doing that personally. I think you can easily get an overall picture of the dollar. There's no problem with that by looking at the Dixie. But if you're loading up every single individual US dollar pair and looking at the Dixie, you're going to start to think, OK, well, it's this, it's that, it's, it's here, it's there, this because of that. And it all just gets a bit muddled. OK, so just be very careful of that. Um, that is my overall bias on the dollar index and the US dollar. If you haven't already, 